Uh, this morning, <coughs> morning we have, I think, a very unusual subject, one which uh, I don't think comes up very often. And we're going to try to explain something that will be of value to you in many areas of research. We know, in principle, that creation is a pattern of vibrations that everything is moving at certain different rates within one grand rate that includes them all. This is true of solar systems and it is also true of kindergartens in a school. It is part of life of everything that it grows step by step through an octave of vibrations. Now, in government, for example, all the different forms of government are subdivisions within the principle of government. The principle is the master vibration. And all the different forms of government that develop, good, bad, and indifferent, are conditions of this one master rate. And this rate has both its positive and negative aspects. The positive negative aspects of vibration in p political or authoritative arts and sciences rests in the ability of various objects or beings to move through these patterns of vibratory rate and change their functions to meet these patterns. Also, wherever a pattern is met by something unreasonable, destructive or negative, the pattern fights back. The pa pattern patterns will never let evil survive. They will continue to negate that which is wrong and build up that which is right. Now most of the patterns with which we are concerned have been functioning for hundreds of thousands, perhaps hundreds of millions of years. And they represent practically every phase of life. And they are constantly mutated and changed by the conditions of society. In the governmental system, of course, there will be the one theory that of government. This theory of government then will develop into ten types of government, which normally will be sequential, representing degrees of, de of, defend of defense and protection. These different degrees may be monarchy, democracy, e communism, or whatever it may be but they are all minor divisions of one vibratory master note, the note of political authority, leadership, that which must be controlled, directed, and protected, comes under a master rate. And this will go on throughout all the passages of creation. It was going on long before our planet was discovered in space. It will continue long after our planet is gone. For wherever government is necessary, it is reborn. The one master pattern comes back until it is fulfilled. And when it is complete and fulfilled, it means its impulses have perfected in manifestation and it ceases or transfers to a next higher level of vibratory rate. Now, in dealing with the problems of religion, <clears throat> which of course is our primary interest, we have to recognize that religion is one master rate of vibration. It has existed from time immemorial on many different levels, but re religion as a principle represents the relationship between deity and its creations. Religion is the is deity being recognized through all the aspects of its manifestations. <clears throat> Therefore, we say that the, the deity itself is made manifest in its works, and its works in every case are rates of vibration. They are the degrees of energy and the specializations of energy that we find in connection with the theories of religion. We must therefore expect to find, and do find, ten major div divisions of the religious principle. We find this represented through the religions of the world, those that have come and those that have gone. For the religion is growing up 
growing old and dying just like any other entity. And when it dies, it dies only because it is completed. That there is nothing left that it can add. At that time, the development of humanity passes to another level and a new power takes over. Whenever a power is complete, a cycle is complete. Wherever an individual, through his religious affiliations, passes from one level of religion to another, this is a time of growth. The religions of the world are a ladder, and the individuals, living things, climb the rungs of this ladder gradually until they have mastered the mysteries of the faith when they have mastered the whole key to religious manifestation, then religion as such is no longer applicable to them. It is not longer applicable because there is no possible way in which they can infringe upon the integrities of life. So we watch the development of religions and we realize another interesting point that I think we should always add uh, manifest. Namely, that in all these cycles of, of vibration, there is conflict. Religions are in conflict because of the attitudes of people. The religion itself is never in conflict with another religion. But its followers, having developed sectarian allegiances, become in conflict with all forms other than their own. So we have a great struggle in the world over religion. Religion itself is indivisible. It can never under any conditions be violated. But man, in his ignorance of the values of life, is constantly trying to change universal procedure. He is seeking desperately to make a new pattern of life according to his own fancy. And the more he fancies, the worse his pattern gets. It becomes inevitable, for instance, that all these different separate new creeds that spring up by human endeavor must find their place in the pattern of religion. They may be a novelty, they might be something brought back from old time. If they fit in, they go forward with the rest. If an old religion is revived, it is revived because it has been re-stimulated in principles and integrities. It then proceeds as before. And those types of religion which have never been improved gradually fade away. Now we know, for instance, that uh, in the uh, modern religious world, world, we've had a great deal of pain and sorrow in connection with the religious life of humanity. These tragic episodes have nothing to do with natural law. The pain is due to what the individual does to the law. The law is never vicious. The law never revenges. The law never hurts of itself. But individuals breaking the law hurt themselves. They come into unfortunate relationships with the vibratory rates which constitute integrity. And their own misdeed brings down upon them an adverse reflex from the law. This does not mean that the law is personally accusing them. It means that there are things that are right and things that are wrong. And regardless of what happens, right is rewarded and wrong is punished. Now, punishment is not because of a malicious point of view, nor is it a result of an effort to dominate religions by some new faith or by strengthening an older one. There is no comp competition in religion, really because all of them are parts of a, of a sequence of ten qualifications within a great octave of energy. All religions are compatible, and anything that is not compatible simply because it isn't part of the religious pattern it gradually fades away. Everywhere we look, we see, therefore, the effort to grow religiously. Now we are beginning to see it again after quite a time. We remember the growth of religions as they developed within the memories of ancient times. Remember the wonderful centuries between uh, 500 B.C. and uh, about 500 A.D. There was a great birth time of religious beliefs. 
that things have slowed down somewhat now, and we are beginning to have grave doubts and reservations concerning some of our beliefs. If these beliefs do not work, they are not part of the pattern. If they are irreconcilable with integrity, they are not part of the pattern. Now, in a case of religion, the selfish, self-willed, arrogant individual believes the answer to his problem may be to drop religion entirely, to give up the problems of faith and do as he pleases. Well, he can do that, but he cannot escape the fact that he lives in a universe that is oriented to religion, regardless of what he thinks about it. And almost all the things that interest him in his atheism have some relation to religious values. Honesty, honor, integrity. All of these things are part of moral life. They are part of the great octave which we call religion. Any one of them being violated brings with it a certain inevitable consequence. This consequence is not a revenge on the part of the law. It is not a punishment by a being or by an intelligence against the person who has violated principles. It is simply that the breaking of a rule cuts off the value of that rule and leaves the individual in need of certain things which are brought only by that rule. <coughs> Therefore, <coughs> we must be rather careful in uh, regarding uh, any religion as superficial. Now, in religious life, we have a, a series of ten degrees from the highest to the lowest. The highest, of course, would be perfect religion. Religion in which there is no uh, conflict or contradiction. Religion on, on that level means totally and completely in conformity with truth. <clears throat> and in that conformity, the individual, regardless of the level of his intellect, he has no conflict with any belief, any integrity that other people may have he will have the capacity to accept the search for reality and be very grateful for those who advance along that path. As he goes downward, though, through the chain of, chain of involutionary development, the, the entity becomes obscured, as we find in scriptures. And there are these wars in heaven and all these things. Now, there is never an actual war in heaven because heaven cannot fight. The war is a conflict over what is heaven. The, the, the rulers of things. The, uh, the ambitious ruler takes the attitude, possibly, that God should be on his side. If God doesn't appear to be on his side, it's a very serious shock. But it has to be. The truth is never on the side of error. It is on the side of correcting an error. It is never competitive, for all truths lead to unity. All errors end in diversity. Everything that is essential to our forthwith growth is going to lead us nearer to the realities we seek, and in so doing is going to help us to be better people all the way along. Now when we come into life in an incarnation or embodiment, we bring in with us the records of our own achievement in the vibratory level of religion. We bring our religion with us. Not our religion in the sense of a creed, but our religion in sense of an integrity. If we were reasonably developed in a previous embodiment, we will be reasonably developed now. If we avoided and evaded then, we will be suffering from the consequence of avoidance and evadence now. We will pick up our religious life where we left it off. We will pick it up with the selfishness and the unselfishness, the kindness and the cruelty, the strength and the weakness that measured it in the past. And the individual coming into life nearly always becomes concerned about the spiritual aspects of his own nature because he is primarily a spiritual entity. <clears throat> Therefore, all of his material uh, actions are karmic to some degree. 
They represent need of further experience to prove moral or ethical integrity. The individual who breaks the rule and suffers is taught a lesson. If he does not learn the lesson, it is repeated. If he does not learn it in this life, he will repeat it in the next. He will complete a mistake until he wears it out. But he will never be subject to a personal hatred. He will never go into hellfire and damnation over it. He doesn't need to. He can be miserable enough simply living with himself. <laughs> and in so doing, learning that he cannot accomplish certain misdeeds successfully. So we come into life in, the, in various degrees of this religious pattern. Assuming that there are ten levels of religion, and that within these ten levels there are 49 subdivisions, we realize that there's room for a large diversity of religious differences and opinions. But in all cases, the basic integrities are the same. They come in a different language for different people. They use different symbols for different nations. They use different words for different languages. They come with all the differentiation that is necessary to adjust them to the consciousness of the group toward which they are uh, being developed. So that of in this religious grouping, we have not only all different types of orthodoxy, but all different types of heterodoxy. We have the world religions, we have all the theories and practices of our ancestors, and we have with it all a tremendous philosophical background. And that philosophical background is the basic background of the vibratory rate of religion itself. There is only one basic religion, never has been but one, and never can be but one, because it is a ray of the infinite. And the infinite only has one ray for that, and never wears it out. The individuals living or developing within these patterns wear out their rebellions and come finally to peace with the law itself. When we come to at peace with the universal law, political, social, economic, industrial, educational, that law no longer becomes a frightening thing. We are no longer afraid of the values that we have learned to accept. We, have not, we also have become aware that in the pattern of values there is always a space for promotion. When we think we have everything we need and we are just so proud of ourselves we can hardly bear it. Something goes wrong and we suddenly discover that we have to go on and do some more. And we have to keep on growing through this pattern of religion until we have completed the 49 levels which go from absolute negation to absolute fullness. The negation, however, is not the presence of evil. The negation is only the absence of the active participation of the universal law in the habits and practices of humanity. So we are very much concerned then in trying to understand some of the problems we have today. We have now a, a proof of many things. Statesmanship, government, is a unit it is a vibratory keynote. A, a government is part of a marvelous uh, cell, or, uh, uh, well, we'll say, a, a unit of power. The government is part of one great vibratory rate. And it extends all the way from the perfect inconceivable government to the lowest possible local uh, political situation. And all these things are harmonious. Now, and when we try to adjust to them, we come into problems. The individual trying to take a law of progress in government and kind of tip it a little bit to his own advantage, breaking a little of the ethics in order to advance his own purposes, immediately he is in trouble. There is no possible way for him to avoid the trouble. Because when you're walking with the law, there's no other direction you can walk without pain. So then the, the mistake that has been made is caught up with and the individual has to change. 
Now a nation uh, may go against the law. It's been, nations have been doing that pretty steadily here in the last 50 years. They've all been out for the dollar and for power. And we watch them. One by one, they get into more and more trouble. They get into a trouble that will continue as long as they break the rules. Now, be, a lot of people would think, I would say under those conditions, that these nations that are in trouble are being punished by the law. They are not. They are punished by their own attitude toward the law. The law is not punishing anybody. It is simply failing to cooperate with that which is bad. That which is unlawful will never be supported by law. That which is lawful will always be supported. And if for one reason or another the support, the support is delayed, it will come in due time. So we look around and we see nations in great trouble. And our first thought is, of course, that some heavenly power, some mysterious dictator, uh, some grand spirit beyond our reach is punishing us for our mistakes. The uh, problem is not that way at all. Because the instrument of punishment and fulfillment are all under our own skin. We have within ourselves a vibratory adjustment by means of internal mechanisms to every rate of vibration that can affect us from the outside. We are constantly under the do domination of a certainty that if we go along and do as we should, we will have no serious troubles. And when we start looking and we say, oh, this poor man was terribly punished for something that is not his own fault, then it's time to give another look. Because if we do and we search deep enough, we will find that each individual is receiving his just desert, not from the law, but from the loss in himself of the benefits and advantages that come to those who obey the law. So we have in our religious mystery today, we have many religions fighting for peace. We have many religions striving desperately to dominate each other. We have many so-called theologies that are martyring their own people and murdering the stranger for, for power and physical uh, superiority. And some of these people are doing this in the name of God. <clears throat> some of those who are doing the worst are doing it because they say God wills it so. And this becomes another interesting phase of our problem. God does not will any such thing. God does not will disaster. God wills success and security. And if man breaks the law, it is man who causes the disaster. <clears throat> there is no question about all of these problems working themselves out. But when they work themselves out, we will have to watch to make sure that we recognize the truth of the matter that we realize that the lawbreaker breaks himself and no one else. That those who keep the law keep their own destiny. Those who obey the principles of growth grow with life. Those who block the principles are deprived of the growth which they would naturally receive. Now today we have a new spirit coming up among our people. There is a question coming more and more into focus that something is wrong with what we're doing. But we shouldn't be out there making trouble for each other. That we should be not out there pillaging each other or turning bombs on each other. And we shouldn't be making under the table arrangements to profit by all this. When these things all add up and they show a trouble, there is no deity sitting up above with an earphone listening to it. There is no one sitting out below who is going to report it to him. And St. Peter is not going to get up and tell him. <laughs> not necessary. The vibration set up by the person in himself as a result of his own action in his pun is his punisher. He thinks he can blame it on something. But the only answer is that it's his own fault. And he will continue to suffer for his own misdeeds until he stops 
performing them. This is a point of view that most religious people do not have. Most religious people believe there is some kind of a punishment that is meted out to them because of their misdoings or because what they are doing is not in, in harmony with the miseries of the day. It is not true at all. Everyone is in harmony with religion and have, having made an adjustment can go on with any faith. He does not need to change his faith. He does not need to do anything except live it. And all religions have as their final uh, code something resembling the uh, Ten Commandments or some Sermon on the Mount to give courage to them. All, missed all religions start by saying that the man must be just. That integrity is demanded by God. Well, it's not really demanded by God, but integrity is there. And those who keep it will be rewarded for keeping it. They will not be rewarded by a separate deity off somewhere. They will be rewarded because their own bodies grow more healthy. Their minds become more clear and their daily lives become more constructive. The reward that apparently comes from God comes from the simple performance of a right action. And all right actions will be rewarded and all wrong actions will be punished by the action, not by an arbitrary deity. Everywhere we are worrying with a universe of life. We are floating in the midst of an infinite field of constructive energies that go on into the infinite future as they came out of the infinite past. Man is an in, as an entity, an entity has been fighting against this integrity for thousands of years. He has decided that it was the one thing that permitted him, prevented him from amounting to something. If he could do exactly as he pleased and conquer the universe, then he'd be happy. But he it isn't going to happen. Because if he conquered the universe, he could only do it by destroying the universe. And in destroying the universe, he would have to destroy himself. There is no way in which the individual who is not interested in integrity can hope for security, peace, or happiness. Now it's wonderful to think of it out in space where planets and stars and galaxies move about an invisible axis which will be there forever perhaps. That all seems very wonderful. But when we come down to the personal life of individuals, where it comes down to the recognition that each human being is a magnetic field in himself, he is a vibratory creature. And his vibratory creature is the support of his physical body. And where he portrays the body, he damages the support. When he portrays or dis disobeys the support of the inner life, he is in trouble. He must therefore always bear in mind that he is an energy field and that somewhere along the line his energies match in with almost all of the major enemies, energies of space. He has an authority factor in his own nature by means of which he attempts to establish a family or create a business. He has a political factor to, to elect or be elect to public office. He has a creative factor which is going to help him to succeed in some personal field. He is going to be drawn to medicine, drawn to law, drawn to all the different phases by the integrities of his own energy field. His energy field, if it is protected and taken care of, will take care of him for his entire lifetime. But the moment he compromises that energy field, that energy field will begin to fail him. Now that is what we have in politics today. We have too much corruption and it is destroying the very purpose for which these laws were enforced. We are no longer thinking in terms of a just government. We are thinking in terms of profit and hoping to last until something falls on us. 
this is not a good philosophy, but it is coming. Now, there is no deity that is going to fight with us over it. If we want to do this, we will do it. But if we do what is wrong, there is no possible way by any force we can conceive to get away without misery. There is no way of winning the fight against truth. There is no way of being happy in a world that we are making miserable. And there is no way of being happy in a home that we are making miserable. Or in the presence of children we are neglecting. Every time we break the rules, we destroy some of our own peace, some of our own integrity, and begin to burden ourselves with miseries which become difficult. Now the planet itself is a magnetic field. And in the magnetic field of the planet we have all the elements, all the animals, birds, flowers, everything you can think of that has gone to make up this Garden of Eden which we were given as a reward for some previous growth. But we are not keeping the growth up very well. We are fi now finding that this garden is a great temptation. <clears throat> this, is this garden is rich, and we might as well get rich off of it. This, guard this guardian, our garden, is uh, bountiful of good. We might as well make advantage of every part of it. We might as well destroy its environment. We might as well destroy its natural resources. Because the main problem is to get what we can as quick as we can get it. <clears throat> it isn't going to work that way. Not because there's a deity to say you can't do it. But the moment we begin to misuse resources, these resources of themselves turn on us. When we, re when we misuse the resource of environment, it slowly turns on us, destroying by punishing us as a result of our own misdeed. No person is required in this. No particular being must hand out the punishment. The moment we break the rule, the rule starts to break us. And if we do not bend our way, we have to find it back again through suffering. So we have now a new century coming up here in a few years. A century which many people are hoping is going to do some good. And at the same time, a lot of people are worried about the probability of getting what we are deserving. And that's a pretty sad prospect. Because we are not deserving too much. We are not deserving rewards for being foolish, stupid, and dishonest. We are not uh, becoming uh, successful because we are exploiting the universe that we inhabit. This marvelous compound cell that we call the planet or the solar system. We are exploiting it. We are trying to, dis to discover ways of getting everything away from it for our own advantage. And as we gradually destroy the cell, we destroy ourselves with it. The uh, older religions and philosophies of the world brought out a point that is perhaps still valid, and that is that the safest life for anyone here in this planet is the simple life. The, the good life is the life that is full of aspiration but not too much ambition. A life that is satisfied to live and let live. A life that is grateful when others do well. A life which helps those who get in trouble even though they may deserve it. But even though we still have the vision and the heart to do something. And until we understand the whole principle better, charity is very important. So we are not now really working until we find that we are not perpetuating problems. If we perpetuate them, we will have them. Now, how are we going to know whether we're perpetuating problems or not? Well, the only thing we need to know is whether what we're doing is working well or not. Is our educational system satisfactory? Are the young people getting the education we believe they need? 
Are the young people themselves satisfied that they're being given the instruction that is useful to them? Are we convinced in our own minds that we are doing the best we can, or whether we are consciously and intentionally compromising everything because it's a little too much work? <clears throat> then we have another problem that comes out of the same thing. If these young people are graduated to do what we have done, the years of the 21st century will be very rough on them because we are now facing into the consequence of a personal and collective mismanagement. We are paying for the mistakes we have made and for the faults we have never corrected. We are also paying for an educational system which we have variously distorted in order to make sure that it would advance our personal desires. We are in the same respect with our religion. We are now looking for a religion that is going to help us to be better without effort. And this is not going to happen. And yet it's not a possible where a group of evil spirits are going to sit there to make us uncomfortable. It means that where an adjustment is achieved by the person, the consequence is bound to accumulate against the common good. So we have to work all the way along with the realization that we are dealing with vibrations, that we are dealing with a continuous mass of living entity, energy, moving from one thing to another. This same energy can cause us to have dyspepsia. This energy can give us a headache. This energy can lead the desperate person to narcotics. And it can lead the more desperate person who found out the facts off of narcotics. We are in the midst of a confusion of desperations. Our world is falling apart. Nations are falling at each other's throats. Every time we open the book or read the newspaper, something's gone wrong. And we begin to say, my... It's, well, the, we are the victims of an outrageous destiny. We are not of outrageous anything except ourselves. We began in the, in the early 1900s in, uh, here with the policy of great wealth. We gained our great wealth by exploiting the immigrant labor at that time, which later, however, has more or less regained its position. But we are constantly thinking only of material success in a world in which matter is actually electrons. So whether we success or not doesn't seem to make much difference. The thing that makes a difference is, is the vibration that we set in motion constructive? Is it going to do things to make a better world or a better life for ourselves? Is neglecting our responsibilities in order to have fun going to pay off? And the answer is, if you understand science sufficiently, it can never pay off. Now this brings us to the realm of science for a moment, as to what is there and what we have to do about it. Science is working very hard to split atoms and do all kinds of interesting and phenomenal things, like putting people on other planets. That's very part of a nice little game that science plays. <clears throat> but there are other things that are more important. It's very important for science to realize that the very world in which he functioned is a world of infinite energy and that the only thing that is proper to knowledge is to find out what that energy wants. Because if it was wise enough to create us in the first place, it can probably tell somebody who listens where we're going in the second place. If we are able to use science to solve the mysteries of our own ignorance it could be a very wonderful thing if we could use science not to produce more and more contraptions to confuse us but to straighten out our thinking so that we know that two and two makes four instead of two and two making great fortunes somewhere we need to have a clear line by means of which science, discovering the vibratory pattern of life, assists all things to keep that pattern, to obey those laws, and to fulfill the destiny which those laws and those principles have intended. There is no doubt in the world that the universe wants to have a happy existence. 
It wants to fulfill itself. It wants to have the success that comes with achieving what is necessary for security and peace. It wants us to learn to grow without suffering. Learn to keep our tempers without being frustrated. Learn to face the mature experiences of living without being uh, a subjected and neurotic. The, uh, the nature wants us to recognize that we grow because it is the law of existence. And if we grow happily, we are happy. If we grow fighting every step of the way, we are unhappy. If we have to decide between natural growth and television, we must learn to select natural growth. Uh, television at the present time couldn't be much worse. They say it can be, we're just waiting. But the answer is that this, all this type of thing, hour after hour, waiting and sitting in front of a tube to watch things that have no meaning in the first place or a, a major proofs of what's wrong. And if the proofs of what's wrong, we're not going to accept that proof anyway. But we should be doing things to learn to help, to create, to provide. We should learn to take the energy we have in life and make it earn a destiny that is suitable. By the right use of our potentials, we grow. If we use one energy wisely, we will have a second energy given to us. If we may become master over our own dispositions on one level, we will have the strength to master them on another level. Growth is what is intended, and nature is perfectly happy for happy growth. He doesn't want miseries. But where every individual grudges everything he does right and considers ill-doing at vacation, we're going to have the same problem. But you are living in a universe of energies, absolutely impossible to violate. We are living in a situation in which we keep the rules and the rules keep us. Break the rules and the rules break us. There's no ifs, buts, and ands about it. There is no way of doing it wrong and being rewarded in happiness. So we have to look around and see what we can do. We're working with the school system. We're working with all these problems, but they're all being pointed towards the perpetuation of the present condition. There were little improvements here and there, a little better this and that, and perhaps something a little stronger in uh, higher education. But for the sub substance of the thing, no change. The change is the thing that has to come. And the change is ma basic. We can put all the patches and all the postgraduate courses on that we want. We can build new devices and new machines until the universe topples over from its own devices. But this will not do it. The answer is very simple. We will have to learn the simple facts of doing it right in the first place. We have to learn to use common sense and integrity we have to use the virtues which our ancestors praised even if they didn't keep them. We are certainly going to be forced in the next 25 years to decide whether we want to make our own mistakes and perish or clear up our condition and survive. We are being given an opportunity for the best and most important in improvement that is possible. We are in need of idealism. We will get it if we want it. We are in need of integrity. We will get it if we earn it. We can do all these things and meet the next generation or the generations to come with a clean slate and a clean world. We can recognize the fact that we can conserve resources, that we can control environment, that we do not need to poison the air, that we do not need to toxify all of our foods. These things are not necessary, but they represent little shortcuts to the ways of profit and with these we're going to have trouble as long as we have them and we'll never be able to create a government strong enough to sustain us in our mistakes it's not possible and then when we realize that then we'll stop making the mistakes and do it right in the first place now in our little religions world that we are living in now our own particular little world of hopes and ideals we find a great interest coming up. A new world is breaking for integrity. We are becoming more and more aware 
of the necessities of cleaning house. And more and more people are willing to do it. Little by little, the improvement of character is becoming something generally to be hoped for. And I've noticed in many publications that have been coming along recently, the new ideas in schooling, the new ideas in marketing, the new ideas in education, they are all working towards the solution. Now, not one of the ones I've talked with have been thinking of doing this for the sake of pleasing God. That was the old way. Now, they're believing that the truth of the pudding is to please the universal plan of things. Well, many people will probably like to call the universal plan the will of God. And who shall say they're not right? Maybe it is. It well could be. But whatever it is, it is an immutable principle against which we cannot survive without obedience. Therefore, the time has come definitely to watch these changes, to see how the tendency has altered, that now uh, atheism is no longer very popular. Atheists are very quiet these days because they have no one who wants to listen to them and they're having hard trouble believing it themselves. But in common case, they're, they're coming around to realizing that a government is failing, that a world is getting more sick every day, and that nations that are hardly large enough to actually be uh, counties are now independent states, and all these things, and everybody disliking everybody. Everybody waiting for someone to turn their back so we can grab what they have. This type of thing is beginning to be very sickening to a very large group of people. And this sickening is simply the evidence of having done it wrong. It isn't, the sickening isn't being pointed out by the finger of God, but it is being pointed out by the history of our day, by the circumstances and the conditions. Now we have also here quite a group of religious people. And they're in trouble also because religion up to now has been rather clannish. It has never been liberal or broad in its consequences. Religions have been at war, war with each other since the dawn of time. We have wars and various uh, difficulties. We've had persecutions and massacres in which, in the name of God, we have been murdering our friends and relatives for ages. So this the religion is this type of thing is not a success. But the possibility is there that all religions are minor divisions of one grand octave, the spiritual self, the spiritual unity, that all the religions have the same source of life, the same means of sustaining life, and the same obligations. Now why we should constantly try to discredit other people's beliefs is a little difficult to understand, especially as we're doing nothing with our own. But the truth of the whole situation is that one of our great problems has been the Spanish Inquisition, has been the various tyrannies in the name of religion, which has proved to us conclusively that that is not the answer. And in this particular time, religion itself is changing. Religion is recognizing that it is a natural destiny, that its essential purpose is to help, not to convert, and that there is no need to convert anyone who is living in harmony with a constructive spiritual integrity. There is no need to convert a Buddhist, no need to convert a Parsi. The only need to convert ourselves when we claim to be something and don't live it, where we refuse and deny the uh, problems of our own daily integrities. In those areas, we need to get some assistance. We do not need, however, to ever think that we can be, be, do it by simply changing a faith. Because the faith is part of a level. We, we will say, for instance, that there are ten levels of religious integrity. That some small native people out on the summit of things uh, are in the lower grade. 
they have their witch doctors and their uh, various seers and chieftains and they live a very simple life uh, their whole philosophy was as it was with the wandering tribes of American Indians uh, be friendly trust your visitor and help whenever there is trouble this was enough so we go on up over through all these different levels of religion we find the glories of Buddhism the wonderful uh, ideals and hopes of Zoroastrian philosophy we learn the wisdom of the Greeks the wisdom of the Latins and we say to ourselves why as our neighbors say now that these religions died because they were not strong enough to live we lost the Greeks because uh, we, they weren't strong enough to live we lost the Egyptians uh, because they were not strong enough to survive they developed too many iniquities but the truth is the entire opposite we lost Egyptians because they were overcome by militant destroyers they didn't die because of weakness they died of assassination they, were die, they died when the, the Greeks died when the Romans came in and the Roman Greeks died when the Muslims came in and the Muslims summed it up very simply if it's in the Koran we've got it, got it already and if it isn't in the Koran we don't want it, burn it this is not the sign that Egypt failed it was a, a proof of inability of a single unit to survive the pressures of the rest we can do the same thing in our Christian life the law of the wars of Christianity the crusades one after another the trial crusades in which thousands of infants went out and died in the desert all these things are not because of God are not because of evil beyond the guardians of Gog and Magog these difficulties are due simply to the fact that we don't accept the fundamental fact that it is our business to clean this up and it is not the business of heaven to receive our prayers and petitions but to roll up our own sleeves and see that it doesn't happen again and we have the same with wars all over one group is down it has to be democratic and the other group is democratic and doesn't like the Democrats everything is different everything is confused a man gets up and someone contradicts him before he says anything and this is all presumed to be inevitable and nothing you can do about it the fact that it is not inevitable and the real reason that nothing gets done about it is because people are not honorable not honest not fair and not good hearted they are simply exploiting each other and the exploitation ends in death not because a god or a devil is out there to do it because vibration destroys that which destroys it when we put a bad vibration into a pattern that pattern is gone when we make a bad vibration in the human body we sicken and die when we become afflicted with a bad habit drugs and things of that nature the body sickens and dies wherever we abuse civilization it sickens and dies everywhere it is the integrities that have to live and if we have those we have nothing else to worry about the worst the problem is not to find a solution or some hero to stand up and tell us what to do the hero may make his own rewards in the world to come but we have to make ours by doing it ourselves and that is what we find is facing us in the, in the 21st century we've got to get something out there that's some good something that is more than profit something that is more than finding new ways of exploiting natural resources we've got to find ways of ending war and we've got to find ways of bringing people to the realization that we live in an honest universe and the only way we can live in it well is be honest ourselves the day of the corrupt leaderships of the past which we can read in any encyclopedia or in any history the leaderships of tyranny 
the leaderships of corruption, the leaderships of mass murder. All of these things have brought us where we are because we deserve to be there. But it's perfectly possible to change it. There is nothing about evil that good cannot remedy. There is nothing about the problems of the moment that wisdom cannot solve if that wisdom is intelligent and constructive. <clears throat> now we want to set up great systems to fight this corruption. We want to have special ways of doing it and make a great ado about it all. It's not that difficult. We don't need new courses on all this. We simply need basic intelligence. We need to take the courses we already have and put soul back into them. Because what the whole educational system, the political system and the industrial system have lost their souls. They've lost their contact with the infinite good. And this infinite good is not necessarily a person. It is an energy, a principle, a vibration. Something that has arisen in space long before our time. Where it came from we do not know. But we are affirmed and tend to consider that whatever it is, it is a sovereign good. And we can call that sovereign God and we will not be far from the truth. For the infinite principle of good is worshipped by philosophy under the symbolism of God. But God is the one thing that nothing can pervert. Nothing can injure. Nothing can corrupt. Therefore, to stay on that side of the fence is to stay with security to the end of time. The days of corruption are numbered because we have the resources to preserve them. And the time now is very near and we're going to have to live ethically if we want to survive. And we do want to survive and we will survive. But we would like to do this rather pleasantly. We would like to survive rather cheerfully so that our children and their children will have a pleasant world to live in. We would like to work in a way in which there won't be any more wars because there will be no reason for them. We would like to have food for everyone instead of wasting it. We would like to have a better living conditions instead of using almost all of our resources for weaponry. Quiet, simple people, ordinary people, working quietly together can do what the giants have never been able to do. Give us a world worth living in. And as we do that, we climb up the stand of the vibrations. And we find that there's a vibration within our own bodies for each of these levels. Each of these levels reacts into us because we are all planets. We are all solar systems. Small ones, yes, but the same general principle. And we can make the same corrections in ourselves that result from a wise viewpoint in larger matters. We can become peace-loving in our own natures. We can forgive our enemies and we won't have them anymore. We can be unselfish and we can get away from a competitive arrogance in which we try to outwit and outwisdom everybody else. The problem is not to do these things at all. Just to daily keep the rules. Keep the rules of the, that created us. Keep the destiny which confronts us. Continue to go on to do what is right and what we... No, it should be done until it is done correctly. That will give us the new start and a new foundation for a better life than we've ever known here. There is no reason why a people as intelligent as the modern world cannot reorganize itself to keep harmony with the rules of its own salvation. We know these rules exist. We see people falling under them and trying to crawl out again. We see all these things failing from lack of integrity, but it hasn't occurred to us to try to improve the integrity. What we have tried to do is to find new ways of bolstering up our corruptions. It can't be done. We might as well get used to the idea and set to work to use the truths we know and the principles that we are learning to understand to become useful and become a help to our own kind. The more we do that is right, the better the future will be and we will come into the new century with hope and understanding. Thank you.